Okay, hello, YouTubers. Um, I think I just did the most stupid thing ever. I, I believe I just, um, thought I was recording a video that would last like 10 minutes and just turns out the hypercam wasn't even on. So I'm real happy. Anyways, I'm gonna show you how to make a... Here, I'll show you... Where'd it go? Okay, I guess it's not on here, but how to make an enemy in Blender. It's uh, down here somewhere. It's named The Enemy. It's a game I made. It's uh, levels when I didn't know how to put levels together. Um, This is what it would look like if... Here's the, the levels and stuff. It's only five levels. Five is insanely difficult. Anyways, so you have the game. You can, here's what I'm going to show you how to do. You're going to make enemies that come after you that um, are, you can kill, I guess, a killable enemy, you could say. And when, yeah, they go away when you shoot them. Have some stuff like this, or, you know, elevator here. Press enter. Oh, shoot, I just messed up. Anyways, and they're also going to be able to, so when they, um, touch you, it restarts the game. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. You're going to open up a new, and get rid of everything, and add a plane. You're going to open up Blender and add a plane. Get rid of everything else. You only want a plane. And when you start out with a plane, um, all you have to do is hit S, and then 30. And what, the reason I say 30 is because if you look, the pink edges are where the edges of, well, I don't know, it's, it's just significance. I, I like it there. It covers a big area. Anyways, you're going to go into edit mode, subdivide it three or four times. I guess four times is good. Hit face select, and I like to do this little cube thing, but um, you're going to hit, use border select to highlight all the edges, squares, this is going to make your little playing field thing, you're going to hit E to extrude, make sure it's going up on the Z axis, which is up and down axis, now let's give it a color, I'm going to make it a, a green, because that's just what I like, I'm picky on my colors. I just like green. Seems good for a playing field, you know, grass. Okay, now we're going to add a lamp. Yeah, kind of put it up a little bit. Make it more over to the side. <laughs> more dramatic, I guess. So when you hit P, make sure it looks like this. The light is kind of over to the left-hand side of the screen, and the dark is kind of over to the right-hand. So it should look like this. Um, you're going to hit add space, add mesh cube. Um, it starts out in edit mode, get out of edit mode. You're going to click this blue arrow right here. Uh, it's pointing up from the cube, and you're going to hit hit it and control. And just kind of move it up a little bit with your mouse. That's what I like about control. It's not just moving it like that. It's It's more precise movements. So, even though it looks like this on the bottom, if you notice that, it it's supposed to look like that. Wow, I really get into these videos. I just kind of found myself pointing at the screen like I'm actually showing someone. That's funny. Anyways, let's give it a color. Make it a blue, like a good guy color, you know. Good guy color. And you're going to hit Shift D, and you're going to move it all the way over to the other side. Actually, move your other one to the other side. So they're on opposite ends, like playing field. And then select your other blue cube. Select your other blue cube, and delete its material. Hit an add new, and I'm in the shaders tab, by the way. Um, and then you're gonna put it to a red, cause that's a bad guy color. <laughs> yeah. So you have that. You have the two colors. The blue one's your player, and the red one is your enemy. Alright, for the blue one, let's, um, hit actor dynamic. Do not hit rigid body. That's not good for this type of a game. It's, it's, um, 
It's not good for characters either. If you're making a game with a character that runs around and stuff, don't do that because that just kind of makes him fall over and stuff, and or him or her, or whatever you're doing. Maybe it's mechanical, I don't know. Like in my Transformers game, it I had to switch that because he kept on like falling and his head was, his whole upper part of his body was like falling through the ground and stuff. It's like it was floating or something, I don't know. So don't select rigid body, don't. You're going to go down and hit bounds, leave all that, add a property, um, hit string. I just do that in case if I want to add something new to it. And for your sensors, controllers, and actuators, you're going to add those, connect them all through these little um, yellow dot things. Look like yo-yos to me. I don't know. They're really small. Keyboard, hit keyboard. from. It's it always. Select hit always and move it to keyboard. And press um, where it, an empty space where it says key and make that the up arrow. And... Over here on the actuators, it should say motion. You want that? Um, go to force, and the second one over is um, set that to zero. Or sorry, set that to five. And then if you go down two slots from there, you'll see a D location, which is D lock. It looks like to me. And you're gonna hit that. It's the middle one out of all the three. And you're gonna hit zero point one. And now, if you hit P, and and you hit the up arrow, you'll go forward. But when you let go of it, you'll kind of slide to a stop. You're not going as fast, though, so I, I like that. It's nice. Anyways, um, you're going to add, add, add again. Connect them all. And on this one, you're going to do keyboard and down arrow. So... When you do your down arrow, you're going to do the exact same thing you did up here, except for the force. You're not going to add a force. You're just going to do the D location, make it negative 0.1. And so now if you hit P, you will go forward, slide to a stop, but you will go backwards and not slide. Now, if you want to slide, I guess you could hit the force and make it neg zero, or negative 5, I guess, so... It would look like this. No, and actually, I kind of like that a little bit better. Let's just leave it like that. And whatever you want, it's your game. All right, so add, add, add again, and then keyboard. Make this the left arrow. Oh, I was having a lot of trouble on this in my last one that I thought I was recording. You want to go down to the D rotation, which is D rod. It looks like. Go to the last one, okay? I had to go through every single one, that was super annoying. Anyways, hit 0 0.05, because if you just hit 1, it goes way too fast. I mean, not too fast, but if once you get to your camera, it will look bad. So now you can turn left. Now you can turn left, go backwards, and forwards. Alright, now you're going to do the exact same thing, except for instead of hitting the left arrow, you're going to do the right arrow, add, add, add all, you know. Same drill. And since you put 0 0.05 for that place, now you're going to hit negative 0 0.05. And now, if you hit P again, this is the reason you hit P is just, well, because now you can go right, left, forward, and backwards. And yeah, that's pretty much how you do the movement. I think I'm running out of time, I'm not sure. But before I go, save it. Alright, save it. Um, that's my motto. Always save. Never, um, don't ever stop saving your games because it's horrible. When I first got Blender, horrible experiences. <laughs> it was, I kept on doing too much at once, I guess. I don't know. From accidental clicking, I guess. But, anyways, just don't always save. Save, save, save. That's my motto. Alright, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.